Hey everyone, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Gibbon, the content executive here at Higher Things, and I am joined today again by Ashley, who is a licensed uh, therapist. Yeah, yeah, le- um, therapist, counselor, mental health professional. A lot of letters, and I don't know what they mean. Lots I'm just letters. by them. <laughs> How you doing? The letters, the letters are different in every state. Um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good this morning. I'm here to talk about suicide. It's going to be one of those. Yeah, right. it's one of those days. Um, September is na- national. I think it's National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Um, and it's still September. So I figured we would check in about that. Yeah, it's worth checking in. Uh, I guess before we do anything else, um, if you are currently having thoughts of suicide, uh, there is a phone number in our comment section. Please, please reach out. Absolutely. And there's also a new um, national mental health 911 number, it's 988. Um, So you can call that from anywhere um, and get connected with local mental health resources in your area. Fantastic. All right, so uh, let's dive in. What do we got? All right, so like I said, September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Um, And I think with a lot of these topics that we've been talking about, it's about awareness, right? I think suicide is one of the scariest things to talk about maybe not for me, for other people, um, right? Like for just regular people. Um, It's one of the hardest things to talk about. I think one of the things that I hear from a lot of people is I don't want to put it in somebody's head, right? I don't want to ask somebody if they're feeling suicidal or ask somebody if they're thinking about wanting to kill themselves because I'll put that idea in their head. Um, And I'm here to tell you that is not the case. Um, Anytime you maybe have a concern about a friend Um, somebody in your life that seems to not be doing great, seems to be struggling. Um, if you ask them like, Hey man, like, are you, are you good? Are you thinking about, um, suicide? Have you thought about that? Have you had those kinds of thoughts? I can guarantee you that's not the first time they're ever going to think about it and then say, Hey, thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, now I'm going to go do it. Right. That's not ever the case. Um, and I think when it comes to, I know when it comes to those thoughts, right is that like many other things we've talked about exists on a spectrum, right? Um, So when it comes to people having really hard times in their life, going through really difficult things, having mental health diagnoses like anxiety, depression, other things like that, um, those thoughts are fairly common, right? Thoughts that kind of pop up into our heads and that exists on a spectrum as well, right? So sometimes um, people have what we call passive suicidal thoughts, which is more like, if I didn't wake up tomorrow, I wouldn't be bad. Right. Or if something happened to me, you know, like there it is. Right. Versus active suicidal thoughts, right. Saying I I do want to hurt myself or kill myself. Um, I have a plan. I have intent. I have the means and that's where people get involved. Right. That's where um, we want to catch people. Um, We want to catch them much earlier, but in terms of like safety, right. That's where we say, okay, it sounds like got a lot of stuff going on. Um, How can we keep you safe? How can we make sure that you're okay? Um, and get some additional help on top of this. Right. And this is a spiritual thing too. We recognize, uh, we believe that there is such a thing as a devil. Um, and so what he tends to do then is he'll, he'll work the opposite of God, uh, where God wants to unite us. He makes us the body of Christ. He makes us brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord. The devil wants us to feel alone. Uh, one of the, the biggest burdens of, of, sort of these, these thoughts is the fear that you can't talk to anybody about them. And that just means that they're yours to conquer, that they're yours to, to, to beat, that they're yours to fix. And we don't fix ourselves. We don't, we don't heal ourselves. We, we've been given each other. We've been given uh, vocations where we can, we can take what's, what's um, hurting, what's, what's broken by, by sin, what's broken by uh, mental illness and actually start to receive care. When the devil leaves us feeling cut off, that's, that's when he can start to, to work awful things against us. That's when we actually start to find things getting darker, not, not lighter. It's, it's good to talk to somebody about this, even if it's a scary subject, because we're together in it, because we have a risen Lord in it. And we, we can share that peace in the middle of it. Absolutely. And, and it's interesting that you bring up feeling, feelings of feeling like a burden and isolation, because those are two of the main feelings that we hear about from people. Um, when we discuss, Hey, what kind of led to your suicidal thoughts or attempts or whatever, right. Is, is feeling isolated, feeling like they're alone. Um, both physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, right? 
um, and feeling like a burden, right? I don't want to put this on anybody else. This is really heavy. Um, I, I feel bad. I don't want to put this on anybody else. And I think a lot of the times kind of how I try to reframe it to people is what if, what if your best friend came to you saying that they're really struggling, right? What if your friend, your family, your parent, your whoever came to you and said that, would you say, Oh, that's too heavy for me. No, no, thanks. You got to go to somebody else. Right. I think for the most part, we would try to sit with somebody and like kind of help and figure out what's going on. Um, but we're always so hard on ourselves. Right. And we're always so critical, self-critical. Um, and, and it's hard to think that sometimes we deserve or are worthy of getting help and support from somebody else. Right. Um, I, I guess maybe two things. Uh, the, the first, uh, one of the other things, again, with that, that whole the idea that we'd be isolated. Uh, if somebody does come to you, it, it's not your job to fix them by yourself, but it's your job to, to love them and, and be with them, but also to point them to the, the people who have been given and trained and trained and trained to help. Uh, that, that's a really, really important thing. I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are so many resources, so many local resources, so many digital, virtual resources, right? Um, but yeah, it's not any, any lay person's job, right, to um, talk somebody out of suicide, right? Or say like, hey, man, like, it's, it's going to be okay. It's, you know, the sun's going to shine tomorrow, right? That's not how, how, wow. how we treat that. Right. right. Um, and so, yeah, it's important to recognize like, hey, talk to your friends about it. Check in. Um, there's also I actually need to check if it's not just in Colorado, but I think it's national. Uh, there's a program called Mental Health First Aid, um, and it's actually set up for non-therapists, non-professionals um, as kind of like an introduction for how to be more comfortable talking about these things. Right. How to be more comfortable um asking people about how they're doing, asking people about some of these thoughts and, and, and also for yourself, right? Like that was a tough conversation. How do I take care of myself? Right. And not then kind of transfer the burden, right. Of those feelings to me. Um, and yeah, I think just knowing it's never, it's never anybody's fault, right. Um, people that are struggling with these things are not blaming one person, blaming one thing, right. It's people get to the point where like, this seems like the best option, Right. And there are a lot of factors um, in that. Right. Organic brain disorders, mental health symptoms, um, psychosis, hallucinations, um, substances. Right. Um, the, the amount of people that have attempts um, that complete suicide, that are having more suicidal thoughts when they're under the influence are by and far the, the big one of the biggest factors. Right. Um, in people doing that and people having those thoughts. And so that's one of the, um, you know, coping skills you talk about, right. But when we talk about that, it's not helpful, right. It's not helpful if you're already not in a great place, right. To then further make your brain not work as well to make a good decision. Right. The substances aren't going to make things better. They're, they're yeah. just sort of numbing things as, as you circle. Yeah. Uh, one of the things then that I, I really like in, in your approach to this so far is I'm noticing a positive trend towards helping. Uh, one of the things that I, I think with the very best of intentions, um, especially in the church I've seen, is we, we try and threaten people away from suicide because we know that it's bad. Yeah. And so uh, threats of hell, uh, threats threats of, of making your problems everybody else's problems. Uh, this is a, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. All of the sort of, you know, the, the one-liners. I, I We recognize that Yes, there is there is such a place as condemnation, and and yes, suicide is a sin, but it's a sin that Jesus died for, um, and, and so there there can be mercy. And if all you sort of have is the law and the threat of punishment towards somebody, well, you might be able to point them away from something bad, but you'll never actually be able to point them towards something good. the The very best case scenario of threatening somebody is leaving them every bit as as hurt and suffering as, as they, they were before, but without light. Uh, what we have is a gospel. We, we have a Jesus who, who comes down into the darkness to bring light to it. We, we have hope that shines in the midst of darkness that's actually supposed to confront the people who are in the middle of, of their pain, of their suffering, of, of their misery, and, and of their despair uh, with something more than don't do this, uh, but, but with something to hang on to. 
you talked about helping the people who, who were, were hurting, who were suffering under suicidal thoughts and ideations. And that, that has to be more than just threats. Uh, I, I'm not saying, again, that the law just goes away. I'm not saying that, that uh, the, the burdens of, of somebody who, who has uh, committed suicide aren't passed on. But if that's all you're going to leave with somebody, then all you, you leave is, is sort of more things to crush them and nothing to help them. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that is one of the biggest things, right? Because when we talk about any of these symptoms, especially suicide, right? Um, sure, you can guilt somebody into staying alive one more day, right? Or guilt somebody into, hey, like, your, your family is really going to suffer, right? Your friends and family, right? Like, yes, that is true. Yes, that's true. And we care about our friends and family and all those things. But that can't be the, like system. you said, the only response, the only yeah. answer. Um, and, and it's not, you know, when it comes to supporting people as a friend, um, as a lay person, right. You don't need these tactics. You don't, don't need these therapeutic approaches, right. It's, it's, it's sitting and listening, right. And saying that feels really hard. That sounds really hard. This feels really terrible. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, like you said, like guilting, um, this is a sin. You're going to hell. Um, people, people know that, right. People already think about it. Um, and I think one of the topics that's been brought up about suicidal thoughts or ideations or things like that is that people using it for attention or people using it as a threat. Um, and, and if somebody's intention is that right, like, then that also means there's a problem, right? If somebody thinks the only way to get support and attention and help is by threatening suicide, there's, there's a problem, right? Um, with their support system, with the way that that person is thinking, right? And so that is still a concern, right? That's still a cause of concern to say, hey, like, hey, let's, let's figure out a way to help you, right? If this is the only way that you feel like you can be heard, um, you still need some extra support, right? Even if it's not real or you're not really going to do it, right? That's still a cause of concern and we want to help that person. Right. And, and so that that shifts the burden then of having to fix somebody right away, which is always sort of what we want, especially inside of the church. Like I prayed, so I shouldn't be sad anymore. I shouldn't suffer anymore. I, I went to church and so I don't understand why I'm still a sinner. Um, the idea that this is yours to fix is, is again, a, a demonic lie. In the resurrection, there will be no such thing. Um, and, and thanks be to God. But for right now, fellowship is what we've been given to offer each other. Um, just to, to, again, to sit with somebody. It's not your job to fix them, but you get to spend a little bit of today with them. And, and thank be to God for that. Uh, and in the same way, um, as the devil would want us to, to be alone and God would give us the gift of fellowship, uh, the devil works under threat and coercion. And if that's how somebody is uh, addressing suicide to you as a, as a threat or as a chance to coerce you into something, again, you can recognize that as God would give us fellowship, it's that we would love and support each other, not that we would threaten, coerce each other. And so you're right, there's there's something off base here. And, and we can sort of shift that to a, a discussion where you are getting help. And I will spend this time with you, but it, it's not yours to bully. It's not yours to threaten. It's mine to take you to where help is. Um, and then when we start to talk about guilt, which which comes around this, because everybody has the, the guilt of saying the wrong thing or not doing enough. How do we How do we start to address that? Yeah, I think, again, the whole just being there with somebody, right, is the biggest thing. And that's more than most people probably have experienced, right? And so I think just recognizing um, being being a support person to somebody that's going through a mental health crisis, is suicidal, is dealing with addiction issues, right? Like, that's its own stressor in and of itself. Right. And so, um, in, in my work, um, specifically with addictions, that's, that's my jam, um, is that I always encourage support people to get their own help, right. Support people to get their own help because it is hard. It's a really hard thing being a support person to somebody going through substance use issues. Um, it's a really hard thing going through, um, be, being a support to somebody with suicidal ideations and that it feels like you're always in crisis. And so, um, getting your own help and support. I mean, I'm obviously an advocate for therapy, getting your own help and support in whatever way that looks like, right? Support groups, meeting with friends, professional help, whatever that looks like. Um, but I think with that guilt, just knowing like you're, you're only responsible for yourself, right? Um, outside of like dependence and children and animals, right? But in terms of emotional well-being, we're only responsible for ourselves. Um, and there's no situation where this person made me do this, right? Or like, I feel like I pushed them over the edge. 
that's, that's what we encourage people not to think about or do, right? Because again, people are responsible for themselves um, and people need some extra support. But I think there's never going to be a time, like I said, where somebody said, oh, I was never thinking about this until this person brought it up, right? So knowing that any, any support you give, any time you're just sitting with somebody, um, friends, family, whatever, um, that that should be something you feel proud of. Um, and that you're glad that you helped a friend and could sit with somebody and not something to feel, you know, I didn't do enough or did I do something to upset them? Right. Like you being a friend to them is amazing and very supportive and helpful. Absolutely. It's one of the things that, um, at least sadly, um, in, in talking to people who have survived, um, having lost somebody close to them to suicide, it, it, the guilt is always there. Yeah. And again, how the devil wants to leave you is the opposite of how God wants to leave you. The devil wants to leave you in guilt. And, and the people who have, have lost somebody to suicide, they always have this what if game that they play, which is yeah. demonic. Um, what if I had done more? What if I had said more? What if I had noticed this? And in all of it, um, again, God wants to leave us in comfort. And so we start not then with the idea that I could go back in time and do something different, but that God has already acted. We have a God who all also loves even the person that you lost, not simply to, to brush them off because they were so overwhelmed by, by sin and, and the power of the devil that they were lost to the last great enemy, uh, but that he has come into this world to, to chase down the lost sheep and carry it home on, on his own shoulders. And sometimes that happens with somebody who gets help and thanks be to God. And sometimes, sometimes the devil tries to win the day, but even then he loses because Christ who is crucified was crucified even for people who commit suicide and he is risen from the dead. To those of you who have lost somebody uh, and play that game of guilt, understand that God has already acted to take away guilt, both, both theirs and yours. It doesn't make suicide okay. You understand just how much it hurts. It doesn't make it good. It doesn't make it uh, just another option, but it makes it something that, that has already been ripped back from the power of the devil so that we can have peace. To, to those of you who have lost somebody and play that what if game, understand that your sins are forgiven and what if is not helpful and, and all sins have been atoned for by Christ who bore the cross. That our hope is, is that somebody would have trust in Jesus, not make good choices and, and not simply not have the burden of, of mental illness or any other awful effect of sin. Uh, we, we don't play the guilt game. We play the forgiveness game. Definitely. And, and this may be uh, a section we cover more uh, when we go over guilt, if we haven't done that yet. Um, but when it comes to dealing with, you know, somebody that has um, been lost to suicide, right. Or any other mental illness, um, or any suicidal thoughts is that as a support person, as a friend, you can still have feelings and different emotions around that person, right? When it comes to grief, a lot of people feel obviously sadness, loss, that what if, right? What, what could I have done? Um, and recognize like, it, it's also okay to be mad at them, right? It's also okay to like be frustrated and angry and upset um, that like, this is what this person is going through. And this is the decision this person has made. And all of your emotions are completely valid. Right. And, and it's helpful and important to get, especially with, with things like this, right. Professional help and support and people that know how to, to help, um, and have those other support systems, but knowing that all emotions regarding this topic are valid. Absolutely. Is there anything else that we want to talk about before we close down for the day? Um, I think just, just a reminder, there's so much help out there. There's so many options. It can look so different for everybody. Um, but just reach out. There are people that want to help you that are here to support you. Um, and you know, one, one of the probably cliche things to tell people, um, is just make it through today, right? Tomorrow could be better. Um, make it through today. Let's focus on today and let's see what tomorrow brings. Ashley, thanks so much. Thanks, Pastor.